Hi there. In this lecture, we're going to see how Tigran Petrosian handles the French defence, and his opponent here is Peter Vas Vasilovich Dubedin. This is in 1950, the URS Championship. E4 from Dubedin. We see the French defence, and we see now the winner were variation. And Petrosian here plays knight e7. We see a3, and Petrosian does the part with the dark square bishop. And c5 now, we see queen g4, knight f5. So that not only holds the g7 pawn, it puts pressure on d4. Bishop d3, and now h5, queen h3, c takes d4. We see g4, knight e7, c takes d4, queen c7. So there's a threat of potentially queen c3 check here. Knight e2, knight bc6, white castles, bishop d7, g takes h5. Petrosian castles queenside. This is quite often what you do in French defence positions. Castle queenside, and here there's a potential for also arranging some attacking stuff on the kingside. So we see bishop f4, rook dg8, king h1, g5. So it is kind of exciting opposite side casting games. Bishop g3, rook h6, we see f4, g4, this does secure that f5 square rather nicely. You see that the dark square bishop is closed in. Knight f5, Petrosian certainly doesn't mind the double pawns, and certainly doesn't mind if white tries to win d5, because that diagonal could really be a backfire later for this bishop. It could come alive later. So white actually plays queen f2, and we have rook takes h5, rook fc1, knight a5. And this is a really, really interesting idea that essentially to liberate this d7 bishop in this structure, it's quite nice to have a knight sitting on c4, kind of teasing white to be able to play this and then open up the diagonal. So we see c4 and Chosen just takes that. So yeah, there is prospect now for this bishop. We see d5, that's just taken. Queen takes a7. Knight c6, check, queen b8, queen takes, king takes, and now bishop takes f5. This endgame seems actually rather nice for black. There's two passed pawns here, two connected passed pawns. And not only that, the light square weaknesses in the position make good walking steps for the black king here. We see king g1 and the rooks double, bishop d3. We see rook a2, d4. This is a very, very strong position for black. In fact, here, black could actually just simplify with bishop takes e2. This is very, very good, where the two connected passed pawns are very difficult to manage. The bishop is tied down here. Can't really step back that easily quite often. Um, okay, so we have a very nice position here as well, but rook d8 is played. We see rook takes. This it just seems desperate, this exchange sack here. King c8. The king starts on a really interesting walk here now. And that's why many consider this one of Petrosian's best games. We see rook h3, bishop g3, king d7. So fascinating stuff. So there will be a very, very nasty pin if knight takes d4. We see knight c3. And there's also a pin this way. So, for example, you know, knight takes, king e8. What does white do about this pin? There's no bishop f2. There's no knight move. So, basically, uh, yeah, this is uh, a cheeky king move, but uh, knight c3 is played, king e6. You can see the king is walking now on these light squares. And here, king f5, knight d6. Petrosian just gives up the exchange to continue the king walk. But first, rook h6 here, and now taking. So there's a strong pass pawn. Black is a pawn up. Strong pass pawn, and very, very aggressive king. Now just equal on pawns, but this pawn, and combined with the king activity in, in this endgame, is fantastic. The king is just walking across on the light squares. And this is an absolutely winning ending. After king c2, white had to resign. Yeah, the pawn's going to be queening. Uh, if, 
for example, king e2, rook e4 check, and then picking up the rook. So very, very nice game. So what we see in this game is a very interesting light square campaign from the opening. At one point, it looked as though Petrosian was going to be attacking on the king side, but he just didn't mind the transitions to the end game. White got very, very aggressive with c4 later, but you can see that the light squares are being weakened in the middle game, and in the end game, yes, the king could just walk over them. Very aggressive play from white, but ultimately there are two connected past pawns in the position at the end of the day here, and this is just very, very unpleasant end game transition. Uh, so, yep. But there's a very, very useful device Petrosian is often using, and he's often called the master of the exchange sack. This is very, very useful here, just to uh, get rid of White's counterplay completely, really. Establish a strong pass pawn, and the king is just super aggressive. This pass pawn is uh, a winning pawn element in its own right, having a very, very dangerous pass pawn. Okay, hope you enjoyed this one. Get inspired. Thanks very much. Hi guys, I hope you enjoyed the free sample from my ultimate guide to chess pawn structures where I really enjoyed gaining a lot of insight for myself and sharing with you guys about various different key structures which you should know about, isolated pawns, backward pawns, hanging pawns, I even talk about form pawns and this actually has a mammoth 45 plus hours of video content in this course and you can get it at a discount as well with the standard voucher code which is on kingcrusher tv slash pawns so i hope you do check out this pawn structure course it's given me a lot of confidence though fundamentally what's going on helps with you know getting a template plan quite easily just based on the pawn structure cues of a chess position okay so i do hope you check that out thanks very much